There's been an explosion in the number of images of sexual abuse against children posted on the Internet in recent years. It is the focus of an investigation by the New York Times that we're going to talk about tonight. But a warning that some viewers, especially with children in the room, may find this conversation disturbing. As Omna Navaz reports, the sheer amount of content has soared despite efforts to crack down over the past decade. Judy, the numbers are stunning. According to The Times, technology platforms like Facebook and Google reported some 45 million videos and photos of children being sexually abused last year. That is more than double the number found the previous year. Now, The Times calls the images horrific, portraying children, some as young as three or four years old, suffering abuse, in some cases, physical torture at the hands of adults. The report also outlines how law enforcement and others are struggling to track and curb the crimes by the perpetrators. Donna Rice Hughes is an advocate for child safety online and president and CEO of Enough is Enough, a nonprofit group dedicated to making the internet safer for children and families, particularly by confronting child sexual abuse and predation. Donna, welcome to the News Hour. Thank you for having me. So that number, 45 million, help me understand that. Is that a problem that's been getting worse and worse, or are authorities just better at detecting what's out there? It's a problem that's getting worse and worse, and authorities are better at detecting this. But we started to see the beginning of child sex abuse images coming into the Internet world at the advent of the Internet. In fact, that was a lot of the early driver of the Internet, that type of content and uh, illegal adult pornography as well. So in other words, this problem has been around for years and years. Has it been steadily getting worse or has there been a recent jump? Well, it's a, a number of things have happened. I call it the perfect storm, if you will, because the internet actually created the ideal scenario for sexual predators to create new child pornography images and to share those. It actually created a forum to share how to avoid law enforcement detection and to virtually molest children. Now predators can gather together from all over the world and watch another predator sexually abuse a child in real time virtually. So all of these things have happened. And, and then when Web 2.0, which is when the social media world came into being in, in the 2002 to 2004, that changed everything. Because now you have a platform where anyone can be a creator of content. And so that magnified the problem. We've had a number of laws, including one of the ones that was mentioned in this article, the Protect Act of 2008. Mm -hmm. And they did a great job laying out a wonderful strategy. And no, now what we know, from this, this piece of the, this article in the New York Times is that not all of that has been done. And there's been $60 million appropriated, but only half is actually funded it each year. And some of that is being taken from the cybercrimes budget and put someplace else. Well, let's break that down a little bit to understand some of these steps, because you mentioned it's been around for years. There have been a number of steps taken to try to address it. It's not like authorities don't know this is going on. These right. are reported cases. Yes. So what is supposed to happen when a Google or a Facebook says we found these videos? What is supposed to happen in an ideal scenario then? Well, they're supposed to report it right away and, the, and that law actually outlines what they're supposed to report. Now, oftentimes they don't have all the data to report, but it's also, they've also gotten very lax. Additionally, um, at the Department of Justice, they created a position, a wonderful uh, position for someone to be the quarterback of all of this, but that person was never given the authority or even all of the funding to do this. So I am so glad that this article came out because it, it, it shows where we've fallen down and what we need to do, but there's even more. $60 million is an enough anymore. And now you've got the evolution of the dark web and anonymizing tools. So that's going to make it even worse. Facebook's looking at, at creating anonymizing tools so that Messenger is encrypted. You mentioned the funding part of it, yes. 60 million in that last bucket, only half of which I understand right. was ever appropriated to go to all the authorities trying right. to address this. So it, is this purely a funding problem? Is it a priority problem? Is it a staffing problem? What's going on and why are authorities so overwhelmed? Well, it, it's all of the above. It's funding. You need funding to staff. You need funding to get the technology. And you, it needs to be a top priority. And so um, we actually wrote the Children's Internet Safety Presidential Pledge, and both Clinton and Trump got 
behind that. And we believe that the this White was House... before the election. This was before the election. got both candidates yeah, to... Both candidates yeah. to make the protection of children in the digital age a top priority, not just from child sexual abuse images, but from trafficking, also from the pornography problem. Because you've got to go at this like a war with all hands on deck. And you can't just t target one piece of this and not the other piece of this. You also mentioned a word we hear a lot, which is encryption, right? Yes. A lot of these social media companies, a lot of these platforms offer encryption as a safe space where you can have private conversations. Right. It's also being exploited by exactly these kinds of criminals. That's so right. So where's the accountability for the people who host those sites and host those platforms? There, there needs to be more accountability, in my opinion, and um, there's not. And so I would like to see more oversight with that. Um, the the, the high-tech industry typically avoids any kind of a mandate. They want to do everything voluntarily, but they do fall short. They fall short in a lot of areas. And I believe, and I, I believe that your audience would agree with me, that we have to put the protection and the safety and the innocence of children over the privacy of some people that might want to encrypt their data. Um, and another thing is the United States is number two in the world for hosting child pornography websites. Number two in the world number right two now. Number two in the world. We were number one until a couple of years ago, according to the Internet Watch Foundation. That is absolutely horrendous. And we're number one as far as hardcore obscene pornography, which is also not protected speech. They each fuel the other. So we have to say enough is enough. I think we can all agree that more needs to be done to protect children in these circumstances. And there's probably a whole world of things that need to be addressed. But if you had to pinpoint one or two things that could be done right now, what would those, what would those be? Well, they would be for, for there to be enough funding for everything that was in the Protect, Protect Act, that the appropriation needs to be bigger than $60 million, and we need to have the governors, the president, the U.S. attorneys, and the Department of Justice make this issue as, as top priority as all the other issues that we talk about on the news just about every night. This needs to be front and center because this is the innocence of our children, and not just America's children, but children all over the world. And they can't speak for themselves. They need us, and that's part of the compelling role of the government is to protect them. You want to see more from your leaders? Absolutely. Donna Rice-Hughes, president and CEO of Enough is Enough. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And if you or someone else you know is in immediate danger, call 911. If you're concerned about a child being exploited or about explicit content being posted, call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST or go online with a tip at cybertipline.org.